Hi, good evening, everybody, and welcome to tonight's select like, board meeting. Welcome back. Yeah, welcome back. Welcome back Thank to you. the country. It was very nice. It was a good break. So I'm all ready to go and do some business. So are we ready to start tonight? Sure, yes, sir. All right. So we have the consent agenda tonight is uh, minutes from February 10th. Uh, the warrants AP1634, AP1635, PR1634, and PR1635. And approval of the use of the town common by the First Congregational Church of Hadley for the Easter sunrise services. So moved. Second. All right. All those in favor? Aye. 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 I'm going to abstain from the minutes. I wasn't here. Okay, so we're a little early for our, well actually no, we'll open up the meeting for any public comment. Is there anybody here who wishes to just talk to us? Yeah. So you can talk to us and we really can't respond except maybe because we it's not on the agenda for, <coughs> for to discuss your topic. So we'll, okay, go ahead. The only thing I really want, I could do a couple of little things. Don Kipsetsky, 234 River Drive, Hadley. Uh, I would like the board's permission mm -hmm to talk to the department heads and tour the facilities so I can make myself a lot more knowledgeable about their budgets and their strengths and weaknesses and their facilities, what shape the buildings are actually in, so I'll have more knowledge when I deal with the building committee, when I go to their meetings. So I'd like your permission just to speak to the department heads. First of all, I'm glad to meet you. It's the first time I got to meet you. So. My pleasure. Hi. Um, so, is that a problem with the board? Set up appointments with them? Right. Absolutely not. Can you set you that up? Any? Yeah, we uh, can work with Mr. Pachinski. Mr. Nixon like will take happen. care of you and schedule it all up for you. Okay, and my second thing deals with the resignation of the Finance Committee. Uh, I researched this for three weeks to try to find the truth. And I went to the administrator. He told me everybody resigned because their terms ended. I asked every one of them individually why they resigned, and all four of them gave me the same story. They didn't resign because their terms were up. They resigned because of what was going on with the administrator and the board. And I would hope you would inform the citizens of Hadley what really happened. Why four individuals that had over 40 years of service to this town resigned all at once. Okay. I think the citizens of Hadley have to be given that information. Okay, thank you. Does anybody else in the public want to make a comment? No more public comments? Oh, no. Okay, so we'll start with new business since we are not at our appointment time. Oh, you are old. Uh, old, sorry. Mm -hmm. So DPW Director Employment Agreement. Nixon? Yes, so we, uh, we've had a number of discussions with the DPW director, uh, Mr. Marlowe Warner II, uh, and we have come to a final agreement, which is in front of the select board at, the, at this time. Uh, he is uh, willing to start on Tuesday, uh, and he's already reached out to the DPW uh, staff and has made some connections there and has uh, been setting up. Uh, for a smooth transition from uh, his current job in Greenfield Town to Hadley and make sure that everything is running smoothly here. Uh, so my recommendation is at this time to have the boards approve and ratify and sign the employment agreement with Mr. Warner uh, for the position of DPW Director. Do we expect Mr. Warner shortly? No, he can't okay. come tonight. His uh, duties uh, won't allow them. I'll make a motion to accept Mr. Marlowe as our next DPW director. And ratify the contract. And ratify the contract. Second. Any more discussion? Okay, I'm going to abstain from the vote because I wasn't here on mm -hmm. the Wednesday week. I set up the contract mm -hmm. and all that. So, all those in favor? Aye. 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 Abstain. <coughs> Abstention from me, too. Okay. All right, Lake Warner Dam Repair and Procurement. We need to talk about who's going to do what, I understand. So we uh, have, uh, the state has released the uh, $125,000 for the project, the Hadley Community Preservation 
committee has con and town meeting has appro uh, appropriated a hundred thousand of Hadley money for this, and they've raised seventy-five thousand dollars of private donations. Um, because we're talking about uh, a major project using uh, public money, uh, we have somebody's going to have to observe the procurement rules for such a project. Uh, and uh, I'm asking the board to establish clearly which public agency or what agency or what entity is going to be responsible for the following the procurement rules, the awarding of the contract, and the management of the, of the project. This is for the rehabilitation of the Lake Warner Dam up in North Hadley. Do we anticipate Kristen being here this evening? Uh, they were invited to this meeting, uh, and I don't see them yet. So just out of curiosity, was the uh, state funds awarded to the town or to so are the friends actually asked for us to help them with this? I raised this issue back in November with Kestrel Trust uh, that uh, because we're talking about prospectively, prospectively uh, public dollars at this point uh, that we would have to follow. Somebody's going to have to follow the procurement uh, laws. And, uh, I raised that again this past week when I met with them and said that there is a procurement process. Uh, they have lost track of that that, uh, that requirement. And so I said that I would bring this up as a subject of discussion in order to establish clearly the lines of responsibility. So Kestrel owns the land. They, they, uh, they're obviously responsible enough. They own enough of land across the county right now where I don't see why they can't handle this. You know, we should keep an eye on them for sure, and they should have to report to us what they're going to do with our funds that we put forward. But as far as I'm concerned, I would like to see Kestrel take this whole undertaking up, you know, along uh, along their own guidelines. Anybody? I concur. I think we need to have more discussion with the parties involved. Yeah, I haven't seen the actual agreement that came from the state. Have you actually read the uh, contract? So can we actually get that information together? Sure. Um, and then my other question is, is the funds for the 100000 from the town are CPA funds? Yes. And do we require CPA funds that we actually, has Hadley ever given their CPA funds to an outside entity? Yes, we have. We've uh, given uh, CPA funds to the church, church. next door Steeple. for their Steeple. Steeple project. And then who um, handled that contract? Uh, that was handled through the town. And in addition, there was a historic preservation restriction registered there. There will also have to be a historic preservation restriction on the dam, but that's that's a cinch. It's not going to be turned into something other than a dam. So, so the precedence has been set for us and CPA money is given out that the town actually manages the contract. Right. All right. So if we can get the additional information and then we can sit down and talk a little more about it, I'd be more comfortable okay. in that as well. We'll, we'll set it up. Okay. So let's still have some time left. Let's talk about the procurement for the land and the OPM for the building projects. Uh, several select board meetings ago, uh, we looked at draft uh, RFPs for the owner's project manager in order to get going on all the building projects that were identified, not including the library since they already have their own owner's project manager, uh, as well as a uh, RFP for uh, purchasing land within the center of town for possible future use. Um, this was circulated for comments. We received some comments back. We'd be happy to incorporate those into the, uh, the RFPs. 
Uh, I understand that the building committee had a meeting last night and they probably have commentary for us today. Does anybody on the board have any other comments about these two? Uh, I'm just concerned yeah. to make sure that we get the comments back into to this. this is, apparently there was a, 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 a miss on the one for the North Hadley Hall in which we had assumed that we were the information that we received from the building committee uh, we reviewed and we had made a determination that because it was in a um, proposal that proposals could be amended and changed as they were submitted to us. The buildings committee I believe thought that their uh, ideas were going to be incorporated and it was going to be resent out and that's a bit of a confusion I think that was discussed last night in the meeting if I'm not incorrect there. That's correct. And, okay. and well, as, as historical actually <coughs> set in stone their requirements? No. We still don't have those. Yes, that's, so, I mean, that's people are looking at this place already. We're looking like fools again. We don't even know what the final requirements are going to be from his, the historical. So, it's not our historical commission that's holding us up on this. <clears throat> it's the state historic commission who's holding us up on approving the restrictions. So let's just make sure we don't throw our historical commission under the bus and no, make sure no, we throw I the mean, right one under the bus no, since the I press understand. is sitting here. <laughs> it's the state under the bus. It's the usual. Mm -hmm. So. Yeah. Um, oh, go ahead. Uh, just the information that the RFP for the sale of North Hadley Village Hall has a deadline of March 21st. If we wish to issue an uh, addenda to the, that RFP, we have time. Yeah, so I would go ahead and issue the addenda to that RFP based on what was submitted, and then we can, if we want to give another week after we submit the addendum, okay. then that's fine, that's as far as I'm concerned. I, I concur. Uh, David, people have come in looking for the RFP for that project, correct? Yes, we've received three inquiries, serious inquiries for the RFP. Was it explained to them when they were inquiring that, that they could modify the proposal that we were giving them, and then it was simply a proposal and could be modified as to what they wanted to submit to us? The criteria for evaluation includes uh, various options uh, for how much of the property to purchase, what use the property would be uh, dedicated to, and also how, how long would the municipality have in order to uh, make the transition to another building for its programs and services there. So, uh, But some of the connotations for some of the categories said not acceptable, and if somebody was to want to take the building over and something fell under the not acceptable category by what they were actually trying to redo the building for, they may not feel comfortable in submitting the proposal at all even though we would be acceptive of, uh, or at least receptive to getting some type of proposal from them. It may not, it may still be something we're not interested in, but I don't want proposals not to be accepted. Uh, because of what people read in the RFP. Well, if, if anybody's interested, they should go ahead and submit. Because even, we may get three proposals, and the majority of the scores may all be not accept unacceptable, and then we have to sit down and play around with those some more. So anybody who's interested should go ahead and put down really what they want to do, and, and it's up to us, or whoever we decide is going to be the review committee, to then sort those out. So um, we should make that clear when they take it. And, and that's why I wondered if there was three people that came in and take it or if there was nine people that came in, reviewed it, and three of them took it, but six of them walked away. Uh, Bridget, I think there's only been three inquiries. Three inquiries? Yeah, we haven't had any more, just the three. Okay, right. thank you. Okay. Uh, oh. Thank you. The, that's okay, go ahead. So go ahead. The hope of the, the our committee was that we, that we brought for <laughs> an extensive amount of suggestions in regards to rewarding them. And the hope was that it would go out as an addendum and get back to the three, three people that are interested because they've been waiting for these modifications. And they, they want to see what, what changes that can occur because there are some things in there that are not correct with regard to business. It's not a business district. So we wanted, we wanted those things changed because it really gives the wrong impression on what, what we're looking for. I mean, you can't ask for business if it's not a business district. It's a local business, so there's a lot of restrictions up there. Okay. And that's what we wanted. We wanted the, 
the, to review, have you guys review what our suggestions were. We get together and make those changes, modifications, and get at least get it out to the three people that, that have them right now. So, so, so they got their option, and we've got something to look at, maybe yes. in the best interest of the town for our and dollar then that we're going to receive. looking at the same thing. So <laughs> the three people are waiting for these changes yes. because they ask questions? Yes. And the They've question, already gone through but did the they building. Submit, do they submit the questions to the town administrator's office? Is there no. anything in there? I yes. Sure I think it says questions come to the town administrator's office. Okay, so anyhow, yeah. so you've submitted some some changes. Mr. Nixon has them, so we'll put them out as an addendum, and we can add another week on to the time as far as I'm concerned, if everybody's agreeable to that. And get it to the three people. Yeah, more and more. Showing interest. Do you want to add two weeks? Yeah. I mean, if you only got three, who knows? Well, we have 19 days if we get it out at the end of the week. So we could give them two weeks? I think week's fine. So a whole yeah, week one week should fine. be fine. Week should be All right. One week puts it at the end of the Easter weekend. Two weeks puts it at the first Monday in April. Let's do April Fool's Day. Is that the first Monday of April? No, no, Damn. that's April 4th. Okay, well, let's do it the first Monday of April. <laughs> All right, any other discussion? Um, I'm gonna talk about the, the second one. Yes. Okay, yeah. so. Well, we, <coughs> well, the, these are, we, we just talked about the North Valley Hall mm -hmm. one, so we also have the... You want to break for our appointment and then come yeah, back Yeah, let's break this? for our appointment and come back. Okay, so. I thought you guys were going to take care of this while I was in New Zealand. We tried. Right. All right, so we have a 715 appointment with Pride to talk about their applications. So we need to open the hearing for a liquor license and a land use license. Do I hear a motion to open Mo the hearing? Motion to open the hearing. Second. Second. Are you all in favor? Aye. 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 So we can do both at the same time, right? Yes, absolutely. All right. So. Yes. We open both the hearings at the same time. Okay. All right. Do we have these? Yes. Do we have an easel? Oh. Uh, yes, we do. Why don't you introduce everybody since I don't recognize everybody? Hi, Mr. Uh, I'm Marcia Del Monte. I'm the president of Pride. Uh, this is James Channing, our corporate attorney. I'm going to introduce my books. Yes, please. Sure. Okay, this is Rich Hoffner. He's my director of operations. Um, Becky is my director of HR. Sheldon is my director of compliance. John Furman is with DHB, our engineering firm. And last but not least is Larry, who uh, is currently our manager in Northampton and will be the manager of the new store here in Hackett. Thank you very much. <coughs> Go ahead. Okay. Um, so first, thank you uh, for hearing us this evening. As you know, we're here tonight to discuss our storage license and our beer and wine license. Um, however, we thought that you might first like an update on the conservation issue that had been uh, happened previously. Um, in addition to that, we've also been asked to discuss past violations with the ABCC. So if you'd like, we're happy to start with those two issues. That's fine. Okay, certainly. So John Fermi is going to discuss the conservation. Good morning. I'm uh, John Furman, the managing director of the Springfield office of VHB, and we're the engineers of record for the project. So, um, we have uh, been in front of the Conservation Commission uh, three times. Uh, the last one uh, about uh, two, two and a half weeks ago. Um, at that meeting, we were responding to a request for additional information that the Conservation Commission had asked for, uh, which basically focused around verification for the limits of any resource areas that were on or adjacent to the site. Um, so we worked with their peer reviewer. Um, we were able to document a wetland that was on the uh, far side of Old Bay Road, and then we plotted that and then um, located the buffer zone and how that impacted uh, this property here. So what we were pleased to report is that there were no wetlands actually located within this property limit. Um, there is very small 
uh, amount of um, wetland buffer, 100 foot wetland bu buffer. <coughs> um, and one of the performance standards for uh, bordering land subject to flooding is a 10 year floodplain, and we confirm that there is no 10 year floodplain located on the site. Uh, so, as we presented all those findings to the Conservation Commission, we were actually able to move ahead and get permission from them to address a, a few things on the site. So, the first thing was is that we were able to uh, remove the brush piles by chipping as long as the chips were blown into a truck and then taken off site. They weren't to be blown around and, and spread on the site. Uh, of the six buildings that were located uh, within the site, four of them are located outside of the floodplain. So we have permission to uh, continue pulling out the foundations, busting up the, uh, the slabs, taking them out, and then filling those holes to existing grade with clean fill. Uh, however, um, we do have to file for one permit under the Massachusetts Environment, um, Massachusetts Endangered Species Act. Um, that uh, permit left our office this week, and it takes about 60 days to, to get through that review process. So until we get a response back on that permit, um, everything's staying as it is on the on the property. Which uh, permits that? Uh, the Massachusetts Envi Endangered Species Act. For what? The uh, we had initially um, filed uh, the the site itself. When you file a notice of intent, um, the site uh, records uh, public records show that there is a uh, a buffer line uh, on the property for uh, endangered species or endangered habitat spe habitat for endangered species. So we had uh, sought an opinion from uh, Natural Heritage uh, as part of the uh, prior to filing, and they came back and said that uh, they did, not, did not result uh, in any issues. We filed the notice of intent, and because the notice of intent depicted a smaller limit than uh, the work that we had originally asked permission for, uh, they were concerned that uh, the areas that weren't uh, identified in the notice of intent might have been had some uh, rare species uh, impact. So we again, when we filed the additional information to the Conservation Commission, we sent that to Natural Heritage as well. They responded back that said that they confirmed that there is no uh, endangered species uh, take uh, for the project, but they asked us to file the permit under MISA just to take it one step further. Okay. And so the uh, next steps for that are that uh, once we get the, that permit, we'll do the cleanup on the site, and then anything moving forward from that point will be part of a notice of intent which will be filed for the project. Any questions from the board? Do you have documentation to this effect? Uh, not tonight uh, with me, but uh, everything's been uh, run through the Conservation Commission. Okay. Thank you. Yep. It's always amazing where that priority, that priority deadline is. Mm -hmm. Let's go ahead. Uh, next, if you'd like, we, uh, Mr. Channing will discuss the previous violations with ABCC. Mm -hmm. this point. So we have uh, Pride Stores. This would be our sixth proposed license. We have five uh, prior license or five current license. We started back in 2002, and Northampton was our first one. Subsequent to that, in 2005, 2006, in Springfield, our Parker Street location, as well as the West Street location, in 2012, I believe, was the East Lamb Meadow, and then in 2013 was the Chickpea. So we have a total of 42 years, cumulative years of dealing with beer and wine and one spirit license. And the, over those 42 years, there's been a, a number of violations with respect to the license. I can tell you, at Springfield, both Springfield locations have failed compliance checks. Uh, the West Street location in Springfield in 2012 in both June and September failed two compliance checks, uh, as well as the Parker Street location in July of last year, 2015, failed a compliance check. Uh, that being said, the three did not. Obviously, one violation is one too many, but three over 42 years, I think, also uh, is reflective with respect to the type of operation. Could you, I mean, just forgive my Absolutely. ignorance, can you explain um, failing a compliance check? What are they looking Absolutely. for? And, and the city of Springfield, uh, each one and Marcia has more specific information I can speak with respect to, say, the incident that happened in July of last year. Uh, what the Springfield police will do is they'll utilize a cadet, cadet individual who uh, looks like he could be a young adult, someone that would be, although he is uh, on around the age of 21, obviously is one that should be carded. Uh, that should be, and so that individual will go in with pre-controlled buy money, go into the store, attempt to procure, um, whether it be a six-pack or a controlled substance, 
I mean, I controlled alcohol. Uh, and then it goes in. She's <laughs> like, that's not, that's not for the license. <laughs> this is not the other side. Yeah, we're not talking about that. Oh, exactly. the <laughs> this is my six years of a prosecutor coming into me. I was talking about it. Say, oh, pre controlled body money, and all of a sudden you go into the search. But that's not it. <laughs> but they do go in. Uh, they meet. Uh, obviously, if they're not ID'd, the, the detectives who are out in the parking lot go in, uh, speak to the cashier, get the relevant information, mm -hmm. and then uh, pursue appropriate action, uh, both against that cashier on a criminal level, but also against pride at the local licensing level. And, was, and so that was, there are three violations. Uh, I can tell you those are all within Springfield. In fact, last week we successfully passed a compliance check for the Springfield Police Department, but again, there are three on our record. Uh, in addition, in August of 2013, or in 2013, Pride underwent uh, two uh, changes. One, a corporate entity change with respect to state planning, as well as applying for our last license with respect to Chickabee. Uh, during the course of that, uh, the vetting process with the ABCC, the investigator, the executive director, they had some concerns with respect to, uh, an issue of concerns with respect to our application, information that was contained therein. Mm -hmm. Now that information is subject to uh, proprietary information. I'd be more than happy to discuss it in an executive session in the chapter 30A if appropriate, and I can tell you everything. But unfortunately, it's proprietary privilege and personal that I can't on the record speak of it. Mm -hmm. uh, but notwithstanding that, yeah. would you like to move in that executive session? Um, no, I don't keep going. feel the need, yeah. Okay. yeah. Uh, so at that point, uh, we again went over the application process. I personally, we personally met, uh, discussed any concerns that the AGCC and the commission had. Obviously, there was a transfer of license with respect to that. All the paperwork uh, was then satisfied at the commission level, and while that, and then one subsequently went to all four local licensing agencies uh, who reviewed the paperwork. Uh, it wasn't the transfer was approved, and we continued our operations as we do till today. Okay. Any questions on the board? If you would like to proceed then yep. with the storage Keep items. Going. Okay, perfect. John, right. would you please? All right. <coughs> Good evening, I'm John Furman again. And uh, what we'd like to do is just run you through the site plan and the spe spe specifics me, uh, regarding the site layout and, and the storage um, uh, permits. So uh, you have a, a conceptual plan uh, in front of you that is a, a look of the <coughs> entire site. Um, so uh, the site as it went through uh, MEPA planning uh, years ago actually intends to build the entire site out. Um, so, uh, and that was, uh, a, that was a plan that was uh, submitted as part of our ENF and EIR filing and is on record somewhere in the town. And we did give a copy of that to the Conservation Commission as part of our, our, our documentation there. So the site actually has uh, two uh, components to it. So we have the Pride site. Uh, which is going to be uh, located at the corner of uh, Bay Road and uh, Route 9. And then we have a future uh, development area here. Oh, thank you, Tim. Uh, we have a future development area here available for, um, uh, for a, te a tenant. I'm sorry. Uh, yeah, 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 yeah. Okay. Um, the challenge with the site is obviously working the grading so that we can fit the buildings in and still uh, accommodate uh, uh, the floodplain and not decrease any of the 100 year flood storage. So. Um, so we're looking, this is uh, the design that we're looking forward. So this use here is uh, undecided right now. We're talking about the corner here. And then as part of this project here, we're actually looking at uh, the installation of a solar field to augment the power that the, that the site currently uses. So, um, so this is kind of an exploded view uh, of the property. I'm going to flip the page and we actually have one that has a little bit easier to see and has a little bit more detail of, of just that corner. So what we're looking for, um, uh, again, this is very consistent with what we had filed with the Notice of Intent uh, and also with the MEPA documents. This is Route 9 along the bottom. We have a curb cut uh, proposed here that needs permitting through uh, the Department of Transportation. This is a right in and right out curb cut. Um, on, uh, old, on, excuse me, on Bay Road, we actually have another curb cut plan there, which is a full access in and out. Um, circulation through the site, we have uh, 37 parking spaces planned. The store in the middle, canopy up front. Uh, the store is approximately 7,500 uh, square feet. Uh, the canopies offer six pumps, 12 fueling positions. And then there's two pumps on the side here that offer two uh, fueling positions for smaller diesel 
uh, vehicles, cars and pickup trucks. Uh, no commercial or large vehicles will be refueling uh, at this facility. So um, because of the future development plans, you can see the road <coughs> are actually continued and when we determine what those uses are, we'll, uh, uh, you know, we'll continue those out on the site plan. So uh, in the corner over here, um, we actually have the tanks that are proposed. There's two tanks underground, state of the art. Um, the first tank that we show here is a 25,000 gallon underground storage tank, which is a, uh, to be used for unleaded fuel. Uh, the next tank up above it is a 26,000 gallon tank, and it's actually split into two. It has an internal sealed uh, partition. 10,000 gallons of that would be for diesel. Uh, 6,000 gallons of that would be for super unleaded. Uh, as far as the delivery system and how the tanks are constructed, it's all state of the art. Uh, the tanks themselves are steel tanks uh, with an a, a internal steel quarter inch plate steel tank. Uh, the, they are wrapped and uh, sealed on the outside with a fiberglass to prevent, to prevent rust. So the steel provides strength, the fiberglass provides uh, water tightness. In between those two tanks, is an inter, it's called an interstitial, which I'm not going to say right, interstitial space that is monitored. Um, and it's monitored because uh, for two reasons. If the fiberglass uh, happens to have a, uh, a hole in it and groundwater gets in, or if the um, uh, uh, steel tank has a, a damaged part and fuel gets out. The system monitors those and then notifies immediately that there's a problem with the tank. Uh, from the tanks to the canopy uh, is uh, the, the delivery piping. Uh, the piping is also uh, double walled, steel and fiberglass and that space between those two is, is also monitored. Uh, the monitoring system is actually located within the office of the building. And uh, what it does is, it, in the event that uh, you have a leak, it, uh, it notifies, the, uh, it sends off a, 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 through an e-dialer, it notifies uh, on the panel um, that there's a problem, it notifies the uh, home office and the IT department that uh, these tanks need to be looked at. In addition to that, just to ensure that there's no um, uh, seepage anywhere within the um, within the system. The tanks are uh, the system is actually hooked up to the, the pumping system on the tanks, and it records the amount of gallons that uh, that come through there, and it compares that amount of pumpage to the sales for the gas. And then at the home office, those two numbers are rectified, and they should match. So if they don't match, that means that we have a, a, a leak somewhere in the system and then it, uh, the, it immediately is shut down and then the, the tank, is, uh, the, the leak of where it is, is sought out. So the best way to describe this system now is that if you were, ever find yourself in a hospital and you're hooked up to uh, monitors that just monitor all of your bodily functions, that's the way these new systems are now work. They monitor everything. They monitor pressure, uh, the flow, uh, any leakage. So um, the, the systems are state of the art um, and uh, we've been putting these in uh, for the, this new system here for years. Uh, it's all mandated by uh, 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 the laws in Massachusetts. Uh, in addition to the three tanks, or the, sorry, the two tanks we have here, there's also uh, uh, propane for the site. Uh, there is a moratorium on uh, gas connections by Berkshire Gas, so in order to keep moving we have to have propane tanks. So uh, we have uh, four 1,000 gallon tanks uh, uh, underground listed on the permit. Uh, we have one shown here um, for this building. The other three are for reserve uh, for the other um, uses whenever we determine what they are. So, um, and that's kind of a, a, a really broad summary of the, the site plan, the pumping system, the, the fuel tanks, and, and the propane tanks. What are the propane tanks for? Uh, the propane tanks would be for heat in the building. Just heat? Yes. Nothing else? What about the restaurants that are in there? Uh, the restaurants that are in well, here? Well, according to the pictures, there was a Subway yes. and a pizza. Yeah, that's, uh, that should be uh, electric. Yeah, I think <coughs> most of the cooking equipment in there is all electric now. I don't think yes. any of that. It's not a, it's not a restaurant, uh, so to speak. It's okay. fast food, if you would, so it's all electric. Okay. The 4,000 gallons was actually at my request to Mr. Bulldog. Um, so not only for supplying fuel to heat and supply whatever they needed, but also they're looking to do a Blue Rhino exchange program, so a portion of that propane is also included in that. So it's not four 1,000 gallon tanks, it's actually whatever equals up to. So there was uh, expansion 
built into that so we don't have to keep coming back for amended land licenses. Okay. And, and his first part of the two tanks is the cathodic protection, correct? What's that? The first part of his speech was the cathodic protection with the two, two tank walls. Well, there is interstitial monitoring okay. in all the new tanks, but there is also, if and it's that's fiberglass NF, that's ground. That's all yeah. NFP yeah. fire code now anyway. So. It's all actually under mass, um, it's under the mass DEP now, the underground tanks, but uh, there still are portions under fire regulation as well. So is there any other questions from the board on the tanks? Uh, can I just ask about the uh, next steps? So, presuming you receive the uh, land license, then what? What's the um, trajectory from here? But the you go to the planning board next. Yes. Okay. Yeah. So um, we would do is uh, file the planning board and the, the conservation commission in conjunction with each other. Um, so we have the ability to clean up the site, uh, limited as I had earlier explained, uh, and anything beyond that, uh, the conservation commission required to be incorporated into the notice of intent. So the plans that we file for the planning board would be identical to the plans we file for the conservation commission. So everything would be permitted through both departments. So that curb cut on um, the opposite side, not Route 9, that'll be a Bay Road? This one here? Mm -hmm. Yes, that's on Bay Road. Yeah, not on the access. Piece. So there'll be, there'll be no cuts on Bay Road then? Uh, we that, have, no. yeah, on, on Bay Road? Yes, we have a cut on <coughs> Bay Road right here. No, Old Bay Road. Old Bay Road? Uh, as part of the future development, we are, are looking to have one. We think that this road may actually uh, come through. Um, we're still working on the layout for that, so we're not really sure where that position may be. So you've already talked to Mass Highway about that curb cut? We have talked to Mass Highway early on about uh, the curb cut. Uh, when uh, we filed the, the MEPA permitting uh, for this back in 2008, uh, we actually had two curb cuts shown. We had this one, which is a right in, right out. And we had this curb cut, uh, which was a full axis. Uh, let me take a step back. Uh, when we first filed for MEPA and, and before we talked with Master we had these listed as full axis. Um, but they felt that with the proximity of this driveway to the signal, that this one would function better as a right in and right out. So the further we could get a second driveway away from that signal, we had a better uh, chance of getting uh, a full axis. But again, both of these curb cuts uh, will require a, a new permit from from the DOT. Have they talked? Have you talked to them? Have they said anything about anything in Route Nine to prevent people from going around? Going around the, the signal? No, going around. So you, if you're going towards Northampton, you want to turn in. You're not really supposed to. Oh, you mean here? Yes. Uh, no, we haven't reached that part of the design yet. Um, but this is a very common uh, uh, design for. Um, uh, uh, busy roadways. The, uh, we have a similar uh, um, driveway like this on our Westfield site, uh, and then one of them is an at grade island, the other one is a raised island. So when it's a raised island, it makes it very difficult to take that, that illegal left. And uh, you know, if you're going this way uh, on Route 9 as well, I think it'd be just as easy to go through this light and come in this way than it would be to sit here and wait for the opportunity to make that illegal maneuver. But, I don't know, the Dunkin' Donuts gets a lot of yeah. people well, making the, a left they've turn. They've perfected the illegal left turn <laughs> Yes. <laughs> cemetery road. Leave all that up to the planning board. Yeah. That's their purview. Exactly. So I'm just curious. Yeah. Okay. <coughs> Any other questions about the land use? No. Chief, have anything yeah, else? Yeah, um, I was just, I was asked to report to you back on the, uh, mm -hmm. the incident that occurred at right. the existing prize station. Mm -hmm. um, mm -hmm. I had put together a letter last week uh, I was out of town, so I had requested that uh, Captain Barstow and Lieutenant McKenna take care of her foot. Um, if you don't, I, do you mind if I read it to you? Uh, Go ahead. Okay. Um, so at the previous public hearing, I was asked to attend to report on an incident which occurred at the 445 Russell Street Pride Station. As a result of recent news reports, Mr. Bullduck has contacted me uh, regarding the December 16, 2015 car fire incident that occurred at the, uh, the Russell Street location, I have made it very clear to him that I felt his site manager and himself, both of which I spoke to via phone, did not support the fire department in an acceptable way that evening. I explained to him that we were actively protecting his property in a very dangerous situation and that my request for his support in contacting our remediation company for the spilled gasoline that resulted from this car fire was, in my opinion, 
very much in the best interest of public safety and community business partnership. I do want to make it clear, however, that Mr. Bolduck's employee that was working during this incident went above and beyond. Uh, she was absolutely amazing with all the, uh, the work she did in clearing the area, shutting down the gas dispensing operations, and removing uh, the full propane cylinder. Uh, it was a blue rhino, rhino cylinder thing. Uh, the car was in within 10 feet of that, and she took it upon herself to get help from not only police officers, but herself running tanks away from, from that site. So her actions are exactly what the fire department is looking for in this type of an incident. Uh, Mr. Bulldog and I also reviewed the fact that he was in violation, again, of his approved permit to operate a self-serve facility, which requires two staff members to be on duty at all times so that one employee is in constant view and attendance of the gasoline dispensing operations. Uh, Mr. Baldock has now submitted to me documentation of fuel sales, which has been brought up to him uh, over the past years. There is, uh, under fire regulation, the fire chief can approve uh, reducing the staffing number to a single person, uh, but it's based upon reviewing the number of cars that are going through for the specific hours that they're looking to do. I am currently still evaluating this request and uh, as the authority having jurisdiction, I will issue the permit if I feel that the information that's provided is acceptable. Um, <coughs> so I have approved the land license previously. Uh, this was prior to the car fire incident, and I do not have issue moving forward with this project with a clear understanding that all the rules and regulations for the current facility and the pro proposed facility will be followed in accordance with all state and local regulations. I expect that Mr. Bolduck now understands my concerns and will be willing to correct and approve upon our business fire department relationship. The permitting process for a new, uh, new uh, self-service gas station is extremely strict and rigid through the Department of Fire Services, the State Fire Marshal's Office, DEP, and then also our local fire department. Uh, so I am not concerned about that pro pro process. However, I just want to make it very clear that in the future that there will be no we're going to be ver watching very closely as to how the operations are occurring there because uh, there's just been too much going on in the past and we cannot be continuing with this type of stuff in the future. So that's what I have to report on that incident. And I can provide you with the documentary budget. So would you like to continue on to hey, talk about uh, that? Gilford, I have one more question. Oh, go ahead. Mike, Mike being that they're, they're going to have propane there, uh, along with the gas station itself, would, would did you look at a, a second egress out the back to Old Bay Road? I, I have not seen any of the, um, I just saw a basic site plan with the up close. You know, they got the cut seen. in the back already. It probably wouldn't be much for them to put that driveway into the rear. Something we can certainly look at. I mean, the restrictions for the propane, depending on if they're doing above ground or below ground. Um, well, you said below ground, but they're going so to have a terminal there, so. Something that will, I'm sure, will be looked at closely. Anything else from the board? Do you want to continue on with your discussion? Sure. You want to do the beer and wine next, or and does this get voted on? And you want to vote on this first? End? Well, we'd have to close the hearing. So we open them together. We can okay. listen to everything, and then okay. we'll close them, and then okay. vote them separately. Sure. Sure. That's fine. Um, before we get into the beer line, I would like to show you what the building itself is going to look like. Um, I think this is probably one of our best looking stations yet. Um, and I think the design is uh, very pretty, a nice colonial building. Um, John, if you would like, John can tell you sure. a little bit about the building material. Yep. <clears throat> so uh, we have a couple renderings. Uh, we should let you know again, this is outside of our purview. We, we have a planning board that's going to be, if, if you'd like to, for the benefit for us to learn, right. but I mean, you, 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 you know, about if you'd like to, but we're, sure. yeah. okay. I won't get into the, the specifics of it, but we have <coughs> a couple renderings that actually, uh, from different views, the building is colonial building. It's going to have a real brick front, um, uh, not fake brick, uh, architectural style shingles and uh, gables uh, on the top to give it that colonial feel. The siding itself is uh, a, a vinyl siding, but it's uh, colonial in nature, so the exposure of the, of the vinyl itself is very narrow, so it gives it that, um, that uh, colonial look. 
Um, this actually gives a better uh, indication because of the shading on the computer system of what the actual color will be. You can see it's kind of a, a mellow type of um, cream color. Uh, we have a standard pride canopy and you can see the signage uh, and the, uh, the pumping positions from there. Okay. Very simple. Okay. John, do you mind just, I apologize, but talk about the trees for a second. Oh, sure. <laughs> so uh, on, the, on the trees itself, uh, we, we are actually just looking at, uh, as part of the, you know, the remediation plan for this, we have a number of trees uh, planned around it. And again, we'll, we'll get through this with the, the Conservation Commission. But we have very large maples along the back. Uh, we have red maples. And we have, uh, um, what was it called, a uh, uh, maple pear, paper uh, bark tree in the center. So what we're trying to do is, is give a number of different species so that if a blight hits them, they all, won't wipe them all out. Um, but uh, the maple tree was uh, a good selection for a long Old Bay Road. It's a good hardy tree. The size that we're, we're proposing in here are actually pretty large in size at, at planting so that they'll grow up. Um, and. Um, you know, once they get better, uh, uh, Mr. Bullock is even offering that if the school kids want to come here and tap the trees for maple syrup, he's more than willing to let them do that. But um, that's kind of like uh, the details that will work out both at the planning board and at the uh, conservation. Thank you. Um, so I'd like to talk to you about um, uh, some of the factors in regards to our beer and wine license. If you don't mind, I'm going to refer to some notes because there's a lot of important points that I'd like to make and I don't want to miss anything. Um, a few things that I would like you to take into consideration as I go through my notes, um, one being our past experience in uh, selling beer and wine. As Jim mentioned, we currently have five licenses uh, that we operate. Um, I'm going to elaborate a little bit on our, our hiring and training process, um, which I think you will find uh, that in doing so, we have very strict policies um, and controls in place. Um, and I also uh, would hope that you would, uh, you know, take into consideration uh, what uh, a responsible retailer we are. Um, first, I'd like to just tell you a little bit about our company. Um, I know that we're, we're based in Springfield, so you may not know very much about us. Um, we've been in business since 1972. We currently operate 30 locations, three of which are you know, in this area. We obviously, our location in Hadley, Northampton, where Larry works, and one up in East Hampton. Um, 30 locations makes us a relatively small company compared to other local businesses. You, you know, Big Y, they have like 65 locations. Cumberland Farms has over 600. Um, Phillips 66 across the street, they have hundreds of stores as well. So we're relatively small. Um, we as a company believe in supporting local, uh, local groups. Uh, we, over the last couple years, we've given out on average uh, each year uh, roughly around $300,000 in charitable donations. Uh, primarily, we focus on children's groups, education, um, basically human services and any local organizations with uh, good causes. So that's a number that we're very proud of that uh, we've been able to donate that kind of money to our local uh, areas. Um, I personally have been with Pride for 14 years. I've been the president for seven. Um, I've, uh, I, I'm responsible for the day-to-day -day operations. I know many of you <laughs> maybe think that Bob does. Uh, but he does not, uh, which is probably a good thing, as you can see, he sometimes gets me in trouble. Um, but I am responsible for the day-to-day -day operations. The entire chain, uh, marketing, accounting, all those different areas fall under my area of responsibility. Uh, my team, who some of which is here tonight, um, just to briefly introduce you to them again, because they will be the team that um, is helping me to run uh, the store here in your town. Uh, Rich Hoffner is our Director of Operations. He's been with me for nine years. Uh, Becky Cusick is responsible for my HR department. She oversees all of our hiring and training, and she has over 20 years of experience in human resources. Sheldon Collins oversees all of our compliance and loss prevention. Um, and as I mentioned, Larry, who currently runs our Northampton store with a beer and wine license, will be running the Hadley store as well. Um, I have a lot of confidence in my team. I think they're very professional. They have very high standards, and uh, they have no problems enforcing all of our policies and procedures. Um, I can also tell you that aside from being the president, I'm also a mom with a young daughter. 
Um, so just as I know it's a concern of selling age-restricted products to uh, underage people, it's a concern of mine as well. It's not something that we tolerate as a company, and it's certainly not something that I tolerate uh, in our business. Um, some of our policies that I would like to talk to you guys about, uh, just so you get a sense of what kind of company we are. Uh, we have very strict hiring, uh, very strict hiring procedure. First of all, all of our applicants have to be mature, responsible people. Um, we don't hire just anybody. I would say on average, um, we probably get about 100 applicants a week and we maybe hire two or three. Um, so we have very high standards when it comes to that. Um, all applicants that are hired have to be approved by Rich Hoffner and Becky before they're placed in a store. And if they're going to be placed in any of our stores that do sell beer and wine, they also have to be approved by me. So we don't just hire anybody and stick them out in the stores. Um, once they are hired, they, do, they go through a week-long training process, which Becky and her team oversee. Uh, part of that is at our corporate office in our training room, and the other is on the job training. Throughout this week, all applicants are monitored on a daily basis. Um, and they have to pass tests every single day. And if at any point we are not comfortable with their performance or we don't think that they're going to meet our standards, we release them from training. They don't uh, graduate. Uh, if they are going into any of our locations that sell beer and wine, once they, are, they complete their initial week of training, they're also TIPS trained. And then once they are, then they are placed out into the stores. Okay. Um, once they've been hired and placed out in the stores, they've been hired, trained, and placed in the stores, at, after that, Sheldon's team kind of takes over, um, and they are monitored from that point. Uh, Sheldon has a team of three individuals, and he and his team constantly monitor all of our stores and all of our employees. And they're watching for a variety of things, you know, to make sure they're in uniform, make sure, you know, that they're giving good customer service and following those procedures. But they also primarily are watching to make sure that uh, all of our employees are following our policies when it comes to carding. Whether it's beer and wine, cigarettes, lottery, they watch for that. And if anybody is not following our policies, um, unfortunately they face pretty strict consequences. Okay. Um, with the new location, as with all of ours, um, every inch of the beer and wine uh, station will be monitored by cameras um, and I'm going to show you a picture in a little bit which will show you but we have a secure enclosure that we're proposing for the beer and wine in the Hadley location all of that will be monitored um, in addition to that we also have uh, registers that have the latest technology that allow cashiers to swipe um, the customers ID and if they are not old enough the register will automatically void the transaction so um, it, it's a pretty uh, pretty high technology and you know it kind of uh, it, it helps the cashier um, in addition to uh, Sheldon's team with the compliance checks uh, we will not be selling kegs in our store uh, we also have policies against selling any large uh, quantity of product. If one individual were to come in and try to buy a large uh, quantity of, you know, any of the beer or wine items in the location, that sale would be refused, and that's a policy we currently have in place and follow. Uh, in addition to this, we've become active members with the UMass uh, Campus and Community Coalition, as well as the Amherst Responsible Retailers. Um, our goal in um, joining these groups was to hopefully help them set new standards for other retailers um, as well as help them with some of their concerns. Uh, some of the concerns that you guys had brought up before that I wanted to take a moment to address. One was employee turnover. Um, I can tell you that our average employee has been with us for 2.97 years. <laughs> So just shy of three years, uh, which far exceeds our industry average. I think the industry average is uh, around a year or less. So for us to have, on average, an employee that's been with us for three years, uh, I think is a very uh, good track record. 
And I believe we accomplish this by having uh, stricter hiring policies in the beginning. We hire the right person to begin with. We train them properly. And we also take good care of our employees. We pay better than the average retailer. We provide good benefits for them. Um, in addition to just treating them like family and taking care of them in any way possible. And in return, I think they do a much better job for us. We have solid employees who have been with us a number of years. They take pride in their work, no pun intended. Um, and I think that you will find, if you go into any of our stores, you're going to find uh, very happy employees. Um, another concern that you um, had was uh, in regards to robberies, which um, I'll show it to you in a moment. Um, and just to discuss that f briefly, um, I can tell you that just as grass doesn't grow on a busy street, busy stores don't get robbed. Um, we've done a lot of homework and a lot of research in the way that our buildings are designed that I believe help prevent robberies. Um, we have very, the front of our buildings are uh, very large glass windows that, uh, and we don't clutter them with a lot of signs, uh, allowing us to see in and out, other people to see in and out. They're very well lit, um, in addition to being high volume. Inside, we have very low shelving. They, nothing is uh, higher than four feet, so that allows us to see out across the entire store. We don't have large displays that block anybody's view. Um, I do have some pictures just to show you a contrast to that. Um, I know recently um, the store here uh, in town was robbed. And I, just to show you a contrast of what, you know, less glass, windows being cluttered, very high displays. Um, in one of the pictures you can see there's a display of Slim Jims, which is taller than me. <laughs> and standing from behind that display, you can't see the cashier, but they're there. So if you can't see the cashier, that means they can't see you. So all of these things uh, contribute to, unfortunately, opening yourself up to robberies. Um, interestingly enough, all of these design um, aspects that we have in our locations are also what, uh, you know, shoppers, including female shoppers, look for. It makes it a safer environment, um, and I think it's safer not just for the customer, but also our staff. Marsha, I'm sorry, what are the proposed hours of operation? Um, for the entire store, um, I, I was hoping it would be 24 hours. Okay, so I just want to make sure. Yes. Okay. Yep. Um, another concern that was brought up at a previous meeting was our proximity to Route 91, um, and maybe that opened us up to robberies as well. Um, I can tell you that our experience has shown we have other locations in other towns that are um, directly um, at the, the bottom or top of an off-ramp or an on-ramp. Um, some of them in not so nice neighborhoods and again we just don't have a problem with being robbed so I'm not sure that that uh, concern uh, that, that you should be concerned about that would there be a limitation on the uh, sale of alcohol as far as hours? yes uh, we so would only have to yeah abide. state law uh, says that we can only be open I believe from 8 in the morning till 11 at night yes and Sundays, the hours are restricted even further than that. So we would only be open within those hours. And I'm going to show you a plan of the inside of the store, and it'll show you um, how we've enclosed this area. And when the uh, when we are not selling beer and wine, it'll be completely shut off. Nobody will have access to it. <clears throat> uh, another concern was uh, underage customers. Um, having access to the beer and wine. So let me show you. We actually have this similar design in one other location. <coughs> so this is the layout of the entire store and we've color coded it just to hopefully give you a, a better idea of the different areas. Um, all of this orange area incidentally is the food area, um, which you were referring to earlier with the different restaurants. As you can see, it's primarily just 
uh, you know, more fast food than restaurants with our cafe and bakery, uh, a little deli. We have uh, a pizza area, um, our subway area, so mostly all food over in here, some prep areas and some storage. This green area is would be the traditional convenience store. All this brown area here, again, is just storage. And this blue area is where we're proposing that the beer and wine would go. This, uh, the dark line around it indicates the glass that we were uh, proposing we would put in. It's a uh, fully enclosed glass wall. Um, we use this in our Chicopee location. It's all safety glass. It's seven feet tall. You can see this is the one entrance and exit. Um, when they come in, they would have to, we would have a dedicated cashier just for beer and wine. They wouldn't have any controls over store product or the gas pumps. Um, all of that would be controlled by the store employees. So this cashier would only focus on uh, beer and wine sales. There is one more exit I should point out, but this is just an emergency exit. So if anybody goes out that, it's going to set alarms off, but um, we have to have that. So again, customers come in and out, one exit only, one cashier monitoring everything. At night when it's closed, this gets locked and nobody has access to it. Um, one thing that I would just like to point out is, you know, other retailers that maybe have beer and wine licenses, um, this is very contained. Um, it's not spread out, you know. Uh, other liquor stores, it's throughout the entire store. Other supermarket chains, displays are throughout the store. It's a lot harder to control who's coming and going, who's grabbing what and sticking it in their pocket. Um, this is very controlled. My one cashier is going to be able to watch everything. That's all they're going to be able to focus on. Nobody's going to get out of there, uh, you know, with the product. Another concern um, that was mentioned was a precedent for other convenience stores. Um, I can tell you that obviously you guys notice that this is, uh, this, this is the one license that's available. So if you give it to us, <laughs> that won't be a problem going forward. Uh, but however, if another license should come available and another convenience store were to ask for that license, um, I would simply suggest that you make them meet some of these tough requirements that we are uh, you know, with the glass enclosure, um, and you know, then I'm not sure that that might that would be a concern. Um, the fact is that um, this isn't the first time that our company has, you know, maybe done something that was um, a little new or cutting edge in certain towns, um, and we've set that precedence. Um, in Springfield, we've done that with. You know, we propose new sign standards that now not only Springfield follows, but other towns do as well. Um, the Springfield Health Department, when we opened our new location uh, on, in the North End, the Springfield Health Department contacted us and they now use us as an example for all of the healthy foods that we sell in our store. So, um, you know, we're, we, uh, we're, we're used to doing new things. Um, I think we have a very solid team that's responsible and can handle this. Um, and finally, I just want to talk a little bit again about our experience in selling beer and wine. As Jim mentioned, we have 42 years cumulative of selling beer and wine. This isn't something new for us. However, I can tell you it is something that we take very seriously. We understand the responsibility of having this license. We understand the impact if we were to you know, sell to a minor or make a mistake. I can tell you Rich and his team take this very seriously. Um, it's something that we monitor on a daily basis and we have zero tolerance for anybody on our team that doesn't follow our policies. Um, and again, just I would just like to again just say that uh, I hope that you would think of us as the best retailer that you could give this last license to. Um, we do, as I said, take this responsibility very seriously. And if it is given to us, uh, you won't be sorry with the job that we do. Thank you. Okay. So I, I'll, I have one quick question. Sure. So the glass enclosure. Yeah. Does the walk-in cooler 
Um, no, it, it is not a walk-in cooler for customers. No. So no, the beer and wine you're going to sell is going to be cooled? It will be. The customers can have it. It's not a walk-in cooler for the customers. They can access it here through doors. Okay. Yeah, if you, if you look at the picture closely, there's two, in a gla two doorways in a glass area, and then you actually have one, two, three, four, five doorways for the storage and the cooler access. Is that um, correct? We have one door here. This is an emergency exit. That's for the That's glass you're area. Talking to. No. Now your cooler area actually has yep. five doors. There's one here and one here to get into this back storage area, yep. and those will be locked. These. You got one on the cooler right there in the brown. Right here. No, next. Correct. Where are you pointing? Yeah. That's for delivery purposes. Yep. And what are the other two doors on the? Uh, on the bottom right. Is that for a utility room? Bottom right, like down here? Yep. Yep, that's to get into the manager's office. So this is where employees only would be. Otherwise it's locked. Okay. So yeah, there are questions from the board about any concerns from the chief about um, liquor they, well, they certainly listened last time we talked about this. I know it was a while ago, but it seems like they are making an attempt to address some of the issues that I brought up last time. I'm not certain that it makes me feel any better, um, but they've certainly taken some steps to try to address some of those issues. My concern at this point is follow through. Um, as with the fire chiefs, uh, dealing with Mr. Bolduc as whether or not he felt supported uh, by him during that during that uh, car fire situation. Um, you know, I I can only speak from my only experience with the man, which was maybe ten years ago at the other Pride store when that was broken into. Um, gentleman came out of the big glass windows that you're talking about with a sledgehammer over his shoulder and two huge bags of cigarettes and scratch tickets and I chased him down the street and caught him and uh, a gaping hole was left in the store until morning because, you know, didn't want to send anybody out to deal with the problem. You know, like I said, I, I certainly am not mm -hmm. pushing that on yeah. you as a, as a potential <laughs> issue, but, yeah. you know, when you're talking about alcohol now being in the yeah. store where that, you know, could potentially happen, I have a concern. I would that's just like to say that, with and that's one of the reasons why I'm in charge of the operations. Um, frankly, had you had my number that night and called me, you would have had a different response. Um, <laughs> then you got from the owner. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> yeah. He he truly is more of just an advisor at this point, and you know handles permitting and new stations. Um, and frankly, he's is still on phoneless like this and causes problems uh, sometimes. <laughs> I'm not trying to speak ill of the man, I love him, but um, that's, that's a fact and I deal with that. Um, so I... So in your operations plans that you submit for new stores, is his name still on it? That his, is his name still on? On the contact list? No, well, I mean, yeah. he's, he's as a backup contact list and he's, he's had over 40 years of, 50 years of experience, yeah. he's measurable, but he's, a backup plan. No, mm -hmm. on, on our contact list, I mean, Marsha is the president. She's contacted Rich. Yes. He does maintenance issues. We have a maintenance person. Yeah. And not to mention the fact that I mean, you have the cell. Any cashier, any employee or private of our 450 employees have the personal cell phone number of the president. I'm not sure too many companies have that. But yeah. now we're available. I, mean, I think it's important just to reiterate that. I know there's obviously some past issues with individuals, some concerns. Uh, but this it is the operations. We're it seems like quite a concern. Why hasn't this been updated for your present store over there on the other side of town? Obviously, if she's supposed to be contacted and, she, you know, we still got a contact list with Mr. Bolduc's name on it, I mean, that, that seems to be a problem on mm -hmm. your behalf, not on ours. Correct. <clears throat> as recently as December, he's pointing out the incident that we had in December. Yes. The first person... Yeah. He wasn't the first person contacted. He was actually the store manager that was contacted first. Okay. Mm -hmm. And then Mr. Bolduc called the store back after the store manager. Mm -hmm. The store manager had the same 
that you know they didn't ask that car to pull in. So mm -hmm. that's a big concern, and there's been numerous issues through the marshal's office. I'm sure you've seen the reports. Do we just make need to make sure and ensure that it's not going to happen again? Um, I've worked with Kenny Burdick. I've worked with Dave Bowden from the marshal's office, and some of the stuff is pretty significant. John has dealt with it in the past uh, when the store went in. So we just. If, you, if you're going to be a community partner and ask for this beer and wine license, then you have to live up to that. Mm -hmm. You know, when we when they decide to put their their signature on it, and, you know, I went above and beyond with the understanding that you know he has improved. Had I known you were the person in charge, I mean, the information that came up in the press, there's been no call from anybody else from the company, and I'm pretty sure, considering all the other folks asking me about it, it must have been. I mean, folks must have known in your in your in your in the Pride store that that, that happened, and nobody's reached out to me to get any additional info. So it Tim, would be nice to have that communication back. I got one more question, Tim. Have Have you been in contact with anybody else besides Mr. Boldick and no, any, any I, of the issues? I too have had a few incidents, and it's always Bob that I I get. And if you're the one, that'd be a I'd love to have another contact with my car tonight. <laughs> when we yeah. have these issues with the um, up the yeah. street, I understand it's frustrating. It, it, it is very frustrating yes. because we don't get the response that we feel mm -hmm. that we need instantaneously that we do need when we have these serious problems. Yeah. And all three of us have had these experiences. Yeah. I understand. I, and to your point with the staffing issue, when uh, when that instance happened and I was made aware of it, we got the, should have get, been given to you that's that very next morning, the, the customer counts, we put staffing in there, uh, Rich and Becky put people in there immediately. Uh, again, when it was brought to my attention, I, I tried to, you know, rectify the situation as quickly as possible. Why did it happen in the first part? Why, why was there only one employee in the store? I mean, if you know that there's supposed to be two employees in the store and you're supposed to comply with that rule and regulation and it wasn't be, being complied with, you fixed it afterwards, mm -hmm. but we had the problem to start okay. with. All I can tell you, and it's not an excuse, is I wasn't aware that there was an issue because, unfortunately, Bob had been dealing with this. Um, when it was brought to my attention, all I can tell you is I fixed it. Okay. So how do we have to... Um, do we do two separate votes? How's this work? Well, do you have any more anybody else any more questions, comments from the board? So. Um, this is a public hearing, so if there's anybody in the audience who has any comments or questions they would wish to ask. So I think we next close the two hearings and then we can take the two separately and vote on them. Can I just for a minute I just remind everyone on the board? But obviously these licenses are, are privileges. There's no question that we don't have a right to either of them. We understand their privileges. Uh, any conditions can be imposed which are appropriate. Uh, but at least not, obviously, if there's any issues, not only can, can you contact us and let us know, but we can be brought before these. I mean, these licenses can be revoked if there's any other issues, any concerns uh, looking forward. I mean, obviously it's not something, if it were to be granted, it's not uh, for return. If there's issues and there's concerns and you feel that there's any mistrust or any violation on pride going forward, if you were to issue either of these licenses, then certainly you have every right uh, to revoke those or impose any conditions you want. Okay. And you're well aware of that. Okay. No more questions from the board? Do I have a motion to close the hearing? So Second. moved. Second. Any others? All in favor? Aye. 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 All right, so why don't we take the land <coughs> permit issue first? Motion to allow the permit. Second. Any more discussion about the permit? All those in favor? Aye. 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 All right, let's talk about the liquor license. Is there any more comments, questions about the liquor license we want to? I know, we, I know we've had all different thoughts um, in myself before I even came here tonight about alcohol going into a um, convenience store. I wasn't quite sure and how I felt about that. Um, of course, anywhere there's alcohol or cigarettes or whatever, um, they seem to be the places targeted. And you know, even with our other ones that are here in town, they seem to. And I know that you, you know, set an example here with having the large windows and 
um, done an extraordinary job with uh, putting the alcohol within a, an enclosed area, which um, others don't. I just happened to go into Pride in Hamp this morning just because I um, uh, was picking up something for a friend, a uh, coffee, Duncan Gomez. Um, I might sure. say what I'm getting. <laughs> um, but um, to the fact was the alcohol over there is not in a locked area. It's you walked in the door and it's right there. You can pick up a bottle of wine and go to the counter. Um, so I see a big change in this area here that, that certainly they took into consideration what our chief um, uh, made it a point to bring out the last time and it looks like you um, heeded their words um, and made an arrangement with, within the store. Um, not liking what I've heard of past practice of of the store down the road, um, but I always have a, um, I've set precedent with myself in giving people chances. Um, I've done that throughout all of my 13 years on this board that um, I have felt that, you know, if somebody has made an attempt to do something, and I think when you came before us the original time, uh, part of the conditions of um, getting this done and, and putting a, a place up you know, which looks very respectable for as you drive into town. It certainly looks better than what was there and I think that we uh, were quite verbal about how we felt about the property in the beginning and that it was a disgrace to the town and how it was let go for so many years. Um, certainly the renderings that you've done has made a, dish, you know, a change and of course we came down on you saying many board members did here and saying that nothing is going to happen until that property gets cleared and taken care of. So we cleared and got taken care of and then the Conservation <laughs> Commission uh, somehow that just didn't go well. Yeah. Um, so I mean, you know, I guess now you, you know, settled things with them also, you know, um, but I'm not getting involved with the Conservation Commission. That's a whole other, other area, but um, I kind of like what you've done and made the entrance to the town look more presentable. So I mean, that's how I feel about what you presented to us tonight. And um, what you've said about being the contact person now, um, where our people that work, you work closely with and doing buildings and things, that means so much more than at least they have an avenue to go to somebody that will be responsible. Mm -hmm. uh, and, and be not only be responsible, but be responsive to their needs and what we're we're looking from you. Um, yeah, I mean, like Joyce, I think that uh, certainly there's no question that you guys have done. You, you took very good notes. I don't know if you found the minutes or a tape recording or whatever, but you certainly addressed <laughs> every single issue that I recall came up. Um, so to that, I mean, I thank you. I, I think it's obvious that you're trying very hard to do the right thing here. A couple of things that continue to be issues with me. Um, the location, the good news is it's a perfect location for your operation. The bad news is from a beer and wine license standpoint, I continue to find it to be a problematic location. Um, people behave badly on Route 9 already. Um, that's not your problem, that's unfortunately human nature, but we have tremendous throughput to the university. We are seeing you know, a lot of college age kids going through who don't necessarily exercise the best judgment when it comes to traffic adherence. Um, I can see with this cut on Route 9, I think that you guys, at least for a little bit, um, this gets up and running, you're gonna have your, your hands full with some people turning in the wrong direction and that kind of thing. Um, and. You know, I, I appreciate the attorney's comment. I mean, the beer and wine license is a privilege. We only have one left um, right now. And, you know, I've got a financial services background and I, a lot of things go to track record. Um, I appreciate the way that you, you, you package that with the 40 some odd years of experience, but the reality is there have been some ongoing infractions. Um, and I consider that to be track record I, I appreciate where Joyce is coming from, but unfortunately, with the very recent one being in our own town, and um, you know, kind of the reaction that uh, that we received, I don't consider it being 
a good neighbor. I think that um, I'm not inclined towards the beer and wine license for this location, but certainly wish you well with the planning board and everything else to get this up and running. I do think it will be um, a good addition to that corner mm -hmm. and, and better than what we've had before. I'd like to put a little editorial in uh, before we vote as well, and that's that uh, Pride has come forward to us with a ton of mea culpas. Okay, we made a mistake, we're going to fix it, we've made a mistake, we're going to fix it, and, and I truly believe and sincerely that you're here tonight to help fix these things. But the truth is, is that the track record is not as pristine as the discussion. So we've had great discussions tonight, everybody seems to be in line with everything that's going on. But I have at least seven things that we've had problems with in the past that are now going to be addressed that if you'd only called me, if this only got fixed, if we were the person, or if you'd contacted me versus contacting them, or those infractions or this. And, and we certainly had the, the time frame where for eight years that piece of property was left untouched and it, it left a, a, a poor taste in, in many people's uh, mouth. And then as, as recently as last week or two weeks ago, uh, you were in front of the um, Conservation Commission and kind of relayed to them that that the uh, select board was totally in favor of clear cutting the properties that's there and that why are you having a problem with it on the Conservation Committee? So I, I don't think that was a, a proper uh, edification of what we're actually doing up here and what we're trying to do. Um, so as recently as December, we had problems with people and personnel at the property, and as recently as two weeks ago, I think it wasn't very well. Um, explained to the Conservation Committee how we all felt about the project and what the project was going on. So I don't necessarily say that I'm going to vote against it tonight because of the uh, of the past, but I'm saying that I want you to, to currently bring the future to us, show what you can do, and then I'll be interested in possibly issuing the, the, uh, the license. But at this point in time, I don't feel it's in the best interest of the town of Hadley until you fix all these problems and we quit going from mea culpas to to showing up with the right information. This is what we're doing, this is how we're doing it, and this is what's gonna get done. John, I think everything's pretty much been covered here. Uh, uh, it's a nice looking plan. And if, you in, if you implement it, 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 it will be a model place for sure. But it, it needs to be managed correctly. And we look forward to that. <clears throat> Being from the south, I would assume seeing that plan that that was a walk-in cooler, and I was feeling really sorry for the clerk that had to stay in there in the cool, cold cooler and catch people in and out. But it is a lot better set up than most of the setups I've seen in the area. Um, so, but then again, I think there's a lot to be said for the fact that you've been here a while. Um, the contacts list are the contact list. I mean, if those are things that have to be updated all the time. You know, it's it's you're operating 24 hours a day out already in this town. The issue is, you know, if we issue this license now, we'll be calling you back in the week after you open and talking to you about an infraction, and then getting the same response. Um, so. I, I'm really on the fence about this. Um, I, it's uh, it's very interesting in my in my view. If um, I, I know we have to resolve this issue sooner or later, so um, is there any more discussion about this? No. Would you like to throw anything else? I think I'd like to make a suggestion. I refer to the board, but. Uh, obviously, I think when we first came in back back in August, which is six six months ago now, the, the biggest question was, <coughs> excuse me, do you go to planning first to go to the select board first? And, and we did indicate that we're well aware that there wasn't a building built yet, uh, but this is what we want to proceed with planning. And with the land license we're in, we're going to proceed the planning on, on Tuesday first. Mm -hmm. uh, but now, obviously, the question comes down to whether or not uh, the beer and wine is going to be part of it. And, and the statute that allows for it, just I don't want to get too legal, but under 138.15a, if the premises doesn't exist, the select board or the local licensing authority has, has the authority or the ability uh, to issue or grant the license to be issued. Uh, and that's what we're asking you to do tonight. Uh, however, it's conditioned on the specific set of plans in which the select board or the local licensing authority issues. 
and then it does not get issued up and until the building's built, the plan submitted, and it's done to exactly what you approve. So if you approve this tonight, and say six months down the road, depending on how planning goes, if there's any other issue and the plan's not the way it's been approved tonight, if there's anything, then you have no obligation to formally issue the license. Granting the license to be issued to us, contingent upon the conditions, any conditions you impose, any conditions about planning, but first and foremost, conditioned upon the building actually being built to the specs, to the T, as we've represented tonight. And if that's not done, and there's concerns, or between now and six months down the road, there's any other concerns, you have, it's my, in my opinion, you have every right to reconsider or reevaluate the tentative issuance or conditional issuance of the permit. And so that's just something I think for your consideration to know. Sure. That no, if you were to allow it, and then the statute, I can get you the specific language and, and read it to you, but it says, again, it's conditioned upon the premises being completed as approved or as considered. And that's what we're asking you to do tonight. So. And I think that it's that, not going to be. Well, it's, it's relevant to, to a point, but it, it depends what the objections are, right? And so oh, so if part of my objection is its proximity to, to the Coolidge Bridge. I can't move I-91, right? right? I mean, so <laughs> there, there's no, nothing Correct. that you can do over a period of time that's going to, to you know, sway those concerns. I mean, I certainly understand what you're saying. And I do believe, too, when you, when you first uh, came in front of us, there were two designs, one with and one without. And the question was asked, you know, would you proceed with the building if you did not get the beer and wine license? And the answer was yes. It would just be a different configuration. Correct? correct. Right. That's true. Okay. Yes. Anything else? Do I have a motion? It's not really anything that can be modified later on at this point. With, with the amount of work you got involved with the beer and wine section of the store right now. Are you meaning if if we were to not approve it tonight, and at some point you came back to us for the beer and wine, would you be able to adapt that plan into your building? I defer to the engineer, but I don't see way of um, amending a plan as to be built to increase 784 square feet. No. Yeah, it'd be tough after it's already. Up. Mm -hmm. You just <clears throat> well, you have to put it in the walk-in cooler in the middle of the building. <laughs> <laughs> well, we have a monsoon in February, so I don't know. <laughs> Manager's <laughs> office small enough already, right? <laughs> All right? I'm going to make a motion not to grant the beer and wine license for this location. I'll second that motion. Any more discussion? All those in favor of the motion? Aye. Aye. All those no. opposed? No. 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 Okay. So we don't have to have another motion, do we? We do, don't we? You I think you have to, have to actually motion. grant the license. Yeah, I can grant the motion license. fails. So is there another motion? I'll make a motion on the contingency uh, to grant the liquor license on the contingency of the specs. Whatever you said. <laughs> 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 the, 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 the license to be issued uh, condition upon the satisfactory completion of the project as approved tonight uh, by the local licensing authority. By the, something to that effect. And I, and I really do take to heart. And I, I, you know, to put wait, this wait, in is the there motion. a second? Let's do a second. Yeah, I'll second it. <laughs> okay, go ahead. So, oh, uh, and I do take to heart that we grant the license, but we are as quick to pull the license as we are to grant it. And, and I'll be the first to tell you I've ever And you, you said it yourself, so we got you on tape this time. <laughs> <laughs> so we got... I know the motion has already been made, but... We're in discussion. Can it be amended to uh, take care of the contact lists and all of the other issues that we talked about as well as far as the contingencies like immediately. go? Like immediately. I think, I think gets built, that. that'll be done. I think after well this meeting, they're well aware of the whole situation here. True. Yeah. So we actually meet next Wednesday. So just in case you want to know what your time frame is, <laughs> in case these gentlemen come back in and we say, hey, uh, what happened with the contact list? The store got robbed. <laughs> So you will, you will get that to them ASAP. Yes. All right, so we have a motion and a second on the floor. 
All those in favor of the motion? Aye. 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 All those against? Aye. Aye or nay? There are are sure on that one. Against. No. no. <laughs> you got it? Congratulations. Um, good for, luck. For now. You have for a, today. <laughs> <laughs> you have a lot more to do for us, I believe, and we're looking forward to you doing it and being the neighbor you want to be, and we're giving you that chance. Please don't make us be the people who take you and throw you out of the neighborhood. Yeah. Absolutely. Thank you. Thank you. Be the rap of choice. She's mean. She hits me all the time. <laughs> you live, I think you live the closest to it, so I'll make sure. We got a vote on a permit, fuel permit now? Yeah. We're 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 oh, okay. All right, thank you very much. Thank you.